everyone today. Um, this is going to be uh, an exciting presentation. And I will say it's a presentation. I've got some notes. I've been preparing for this one. I've been doing some research here within the group to uh, source some issues that I've been thinking about. And uh, it's going to be really helpful. So what am, what am I talking about today? What am I talking about today? I'm talking about three fat loss tips for adults over 50. It's going to be super awesome. I'm also going to be talking about MCTs. These are medium chain triglycerides. This is our native path MCT oil powder. Uh, many of you have been asking about, is there something that I can take to help with weight loss? And this is it. So I'm going to talk more about that in this video. I'll talk about what MCTs are, how it helps you lose weight. Uh, but if you ever want to skip to the next step, you can always check out the article I put at the very top, MCT and belly fat. It's really great for specifically targeting belly fat. And I'll talk about why that's important. So first, let's talk about what, why, why adults over, over 50 um, fat loss and not just generally fat loss. Well, there's, there's a difference, right? Um, someone who's younger, who has a high metabolism, who has lots of energy, who doesn't have joint pain, they're, the way they go about losing weight is going to be a little different than someone over 50. So someone over 50 has different things to think about. Um, lower energy, and we know that as we age, metabolism slows down. So we have to intentionally do things that are a little different to, to make sure it works for a 50-year-old or someone over 50. And we also have to take in consideration things like joint pain and as we age, also keeping the brain healthy. Those are really important things to think about. Um, so let's talk about the conventional advice that most people think about, which is uh, eat less, exercise more. Eat less, exercise more. That, that might work if you are under 50, but if you're over 50, it's not going to work. There are different things to think about in terms of quality, in terms of what you can do to jumpstart your metabolism. So that, that advice of exercise more, eat less, and why am I not losing weight, <laughs> that, just, that, that does not work. We need to think about something different. So let's talk about the issue with obesity in this country. Um, and this is why Rachel and I are always talking about health first um, because it's, it's at the forefront of what's going on in the world today. But 40% of Americans are now clinically obese. 40% of Americans are now clinically obese. It's at the point where it's now, now normal to be overweight. So that, that's not something that was necessarily the case when I grew up in, in the 80s and 90s. It certainly wasn't the case in the 60s and 70s. It's now normal to be overweight, right? I'm seeing more and more people uh, on TV, there's more health professionals, it's becoming part of our culture, and it's hard to see how big of a deal it is until you start looking at other statistics of other countries. For instance, like China, it's, it's like 6%, it's much less. I mean, it's a significant difference, right, in terms of how obese we are in this country. We now have the first generation of children who are expected to die before th their parents, right? That's how bad obesity has gotten because it's not just adults that are having it. It's what we're actually feeding our kids. It's a, it's a cultural thing that we have going on in, this, in our country. Um, and obesity is also part of metabolic syndrome. So other things that include metabolic syndrome uh, would be high triglycerides, high blood pressure, insulin resistance, cholesterol issues. We know that metabolic syndrome and these issues are what lead to the big killers like heart disease and cancer. And we also know that people that are obese that are dealing with metabolic syndrome, those are the highest death rates with COVID, right? So it's a big deal. It's not, it's not something to be, to be like uh, ignoring, you know? I've been polling the group lately here, right here in the group. I've been asking you guys what your experience has been like since COVID started. And I asked how much weight did you gain or lose since this whole thing started? Most people gained weight and a few people lost weight, but most people gained weight. I'd say on average, I, I was seeing things like gain 20 pounds, gain 30 pounds. Since this thing has started, we've been isolating at home. There's a little stress going on out in the world and we're right next to the pantry. We're right next to the fridge and we're told to not go outside. So a lot of things are happening there. We're closer to our comfort foods. We're more stressed out. We're not moving. And that's creating a little environment for you to gain more weight, right? It's not good for you. It's not good for you. Some of you have lost weight, so it's possible to lose weight during this time. And that's where I want to take you guys back and, and really get you focusing on the least things that can make the most difference. There's a lot of things that you could do, a lot, a lot of things that you could do, but what's most important is that you do the least things that make the most difference. I also asked where on your body, I polled you guys, I said, where on your body do you carry the most unwanted body fat? I asked you, but was it under your arms? Was it 
your belly? Was it your hips? Was it your backside? And overwhelmingly, most people said belly fat, belly fat, right? So this is, a, this is another issue that is indicative of your health. If you're carrying lots of weight in your belly, around your intestines, visceral fat, all that stuff is around your organs. That's not good for your health, right? It's one thing to have it under your arm. It's another to have it in your belly that slows down things like your liver, your kidney, your spleen, your ability to digest food, your ability to eliminate toxins. When this gets backed up in, in the intestines, a whole lot of other things happen. So it's really important that we get rid of this belly fat, we fix digestion, we start boosting your metabolism in the most effective natural way, okay? So we wanna talk about those things. We also wanna make, make a distinction between fat loss and weight loss. Fat loss and weight loss. Because weight loss could be losing fat, but it could also be losing muscle. Fat loss is losing fat and maintaining and improving body composition, right? We don't wanna lose muscle. That muscle is important for you. You need muscle for your mobility to get up and around, to do things, to lift things, to carry things. That muscle is important for supporting the structure and integrity of your joints. We don't wanna just starve ourselves and lose weight. We want fat loss. We want smart, smart fat loss. So I'm gonna be talking about that too. Now, if you're just joining me, give me a like or, give, or make a comment, just say hi. Um, your likes and your comments when you watch these videos help other people in our group see this video. It's very, very important. We want this group to be healthy. We want this group to get all the information. So let's talk about the first thing that you can do, the first tip that you can do to lose that unwanted fat. So here it is. This is the oldest trick in the books <laughs> when it comes to losing fat. It's to start your day, make your first meal or drink of the day protein and fat. You want it pr protein and fat. You do not want carbs, 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 okay? The classic American breakfast, the classic American shake, the classic American smoothie in the morning is filled with carbs and has very little protein and very little fat. And what that does is when you eat a bowl of cereal or when you drink juice or when you have a big big smoothie with a lot of fruit, fruit, fruit and, and all that stuff, you're giving your body a surge of carbohydrates which get, gets broken down into glucose in the body, right? And that glucose then goes in your bloodstream and it sends a signal to your pancreas to start producing insulin to go pick up those glucose molecules and do something with them, right? When there's too much glucose in the bloodstream, and the insulin it has to work really hard, it has to produce a lot of insulin coming from the pancreas. There's, there's no place for that glucose to go after a while. It starts storing itself as fat. It's not able to get into your cells anymore when you surge your body with glucose in the morning. Okay, so you immediately start the day becoming a sugar burner and storing fat. Okay, it also leads to more cravings throughout the day. If your body gets uh, sugar at the beginning of the day, it's gonna have a big spike in energy you know, your blood sugar goes up and then you have a crash, right? It's like a volatile stock market, up and down, up and down, up and down all the time. So that leads to that leads to more cravings and it leads to more weight gain. So the easiest fix in the book to get people away from being addicted to sugar is to instead start your day with protein and fat. We wanna transition you from being a sugar burner. That's where you, you don't wanna get your energy from sugar anymore. You wanna start getting it from quality fat. Okay, quality fat, and that's where MCT can really help you. I mentioned um, protein and fat to start your day. It doesn't necessarily have to be at breakfast at 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. Just the first thing that you do at some point, make that protein and fat. It could be breakfast, could be your coffee. Breakfast might look like uh, <laughs> might look like what a normal lunch looks like. Might look like what a normal dinner looks like. It could look like um, eggs and an avocado. It could look like chicken salad with olives. It could look like beef or steak with veggies and olive oil. Think about that as your first meal. And what I like to do, which is really simple, is to make my coffee protein and fat. So what I do every morning is I take the collagen, which is protein, put it in my coffee, and I add the MCT, right? This is fat. This is coming from, this is derived from coconuts. It's like the most potent part of fat within the coconut, right? And what that does, is it slows your blood sugar down, right? Instead of having these big spikes, it gently goes up and down, right? Your energy can go much longer. You'll notice that you don't have the cravings anymore. You don't have the dip in energy, and you can go longer periods of time without eating. So you naturally take in less calories because you're more satiated with something like MCT and collagen in your coffee. 
So this is the, the, the kind of the, the bonus of what you can do to your coffee. I know a lot of you guys are using collagen, but you can just add some MCT in there and you've already done the thing to start your day with protein and fat. You're already off to a good start, right? But be thinking about that. Be thinking of protein and fat and less carbohydrates. Most people, it's just carbs. Carbs, 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 carbs. Which brings me to the next thing is liquid carbohydrates, right? This is juices, apple juices, sodas, even the diet sodas do things that are, that are not beneficial to uh, your, your weight, right? So instead, the next tip, you're gonna hear me say this over and over and over again, tip number two is every day, drink half your body weight and ounces of water. I'm all day, I'm just walking around with this thing, all day. I, I just have make sure I have three of these a day and I'm golden. So what does what drinking half your body weight and ounces of water do? First, it's, it's replacing liquid where you would might might otherwise be drinking something else like like milk, which is very problematic with gaining weight. Um, any of those liquid carbohydrates, replace it with just water, right? You can make it taste good, do all these things, put lemon in there, whatever you want, that's fine. But the other thing it does is it fixes your cravings. Many times people just go and snack on something, but they're not really hungry, they're thirsty. Your cells, your body, it's craving water all the time. It's over it's over 60-70% water. It wants water. You got to give it water. So you have to give it intentionally. But many times when you're when you're going to the fridge or you're going to the pantry to give a little snack, stop and drink some water first. And what you'll notice is that you really weren't hungry. You were just thirsty. There's a distinction there. So it takes a little bit of awareness to practice that. But again, half your body weight in ounces of water. The other thing it does is it stimulates digestion. I remember we carry a lot of fat around our organs and our kidneys and our liver and our spleen and all those other things around the intestines. Well, when you start drinking water, there's a lot of a lot of stuff backed up in there, right? And the water helps spread that out and get things moving. So you can you can literally like because of water, just drinking water. I know it sounds weird, but you can like poop out fat. You can like pee out fat. I mean, you can you can just start moving things around. These, again, I'm telling you the least things that you can do that make the most difference. I'm not telling you the little things that make a little difference. I, and I've tried this over and over with thousands and thousands of people. Half your body weight in ounces of water, okay? Number three thing, and this is the least sexy thing, and I'm gonna keep saying it over and over and over again, and you're never gonna hear this on any commercial. It's not, it's not for sale, right? They can't monetize this, here it is. Sleep at least seven hours a night in a pitch black room uninterrupted sleep this is the, another least thing they'll make the most difference right so here, they've done numerous studies on sleep and uh and weight and, and fat right and what they're finding is that people like they, they, they take dieters people who are on a, a nutrition plan when dieters got on a full nights of sleep more than half of the weight they lost was fat okay when they cut back on their sleep only one fourth of their weight loss came from fat so sleep derived dieters also felt hungrier, they produce higher levels of ghrelin, and it's a hormone that triggers hunger and reduces energy expenditure. So one night of sleep deprivation is, is like a bender in college, right? It messes you, it wrecks your metabolism so bad, right? One night of sleep deprivation. And you'll notice anytime you don't sleep well, you naturally start craving carbohydrates because your body didn't get the energy that it got last night, it didn't repair. So it's, it's gonna be searching for, for other sources of energy. It's gonna be going for caffeine, right? sleeping in a pitch black room, turning off that big screen before you go to bed, right? And, uh, and really giving uh, quality to your sleep is super, super important. So those are three easy tips. Start your day with protein and fat, drink half your body weight in ounces of water, and then sleep at least seven hours a night of sleep uninterrupted, right? Now I could talk about all these other things about exercise and like, and walking and breathing and doing all these other things. None of them top those three things, right? So let's come back to the protein and fat and specifically MCTs and going back to the article I put up there, MCTs and how it specifically helps belly fat. I'm going to give another presentation on and uh, going deeper into the benefits of MCTs tomorrow. But this week, Rachel and I are doing a, a discount where you can get 52% off. It's a special promotion for this week only, only for people who are in this group. So you go on our website, it's like twice as much. But MCTs, you can add to your coffee with collagen and start your day with uh, protein and fat and be well on your, you can, one little change you can make to your coffee to upgrade it and make it a fat burning coffee, right? So what, some things that MCT does, and you can learn about this more at the, at the article I put up there, but it accelerates fat loss and reduces waist circumference, specifically targets the belly fat area. There's studies on this. 
and they discovered uh, that the triglycerides, the, the overall weight loss happened more so in the belly area with people who are taking MCTs, right? It also helps your appetite control. I mentioned how it, this fat is very satiating, so it prevents you from overeating in other areas, so it helps control appetite, and uh, it helps regulate blood sugar. I mentioned that high blood pressure, high blood sugar, these, these things that lead to metabolic syndrome, which lead to all these other cancers and heart disease and all that, that can be fixed. A lot of that can be mitigated by controlling your blood sugar with the health of MCTs. And it helps you prevent future weight gain because it gets you transitioning from being a sugar burner to a fat burner. When that happens, losing weight is super easy. And this is an easy thing that you can do to kickstart that. Kickstart it, right? And you're probably asking like, what is it? What does it look like? What does it smell like? What does it taste like? It's a white powder, kind of like collagen, but it's a little more fluffy, right? You can see it right here. And uh, it mixes super easy. Um, especially if you have one of those frothers, but I just need to take a scoop of this and a scoop of collagen and just mix it in a, in a coffee and it's like super, super tasty. It has like a creamy texture. Um, remember it does come from coconut, but it doesn't have like a, uh, a coconut flavor to it. It's just kind of a creamy sort of flavor to it. So I'll be talking more about MCTs tomorrow, but if you want to learn more right now, check out the article above. I put a link, MCT and belly fat. You'll read more about the article and how MCTs can help you um, specifically lose unwanted body fat. So hope you guys enjoyed that. I'll be around for the rest of the afternoon. If you have a question, just leave it in the comments section. I'm happy to answer anything. I hope you guys are all having a wonderful day. Hope you enjoyed the presentation and I will talk to you very soon. Okay, bye-bye.